Welcome back to the channel, and I'm your host, Coach Evans. And today we're going to talk about our top 10 uh, DBs, well, safeties, and corners, you know, for this 2022 draft that's coming up Thursday. Uh, roll the intro, and let's go. Before we get started, I want to make sure I thank the Patreons for all that you do. And if you would like to become a Patreon, go over to patreon.com backslash sip the tally and, um, you know, do what you do. I want to thank Chris, Miss Too Much, Mo, Alec, Jason, Jesse, Brandon, Mark, Arrow, and Miss Antoinette. Hey, let's get started. Number 10 on the list is Roger McCrary from Auburn. Uh, you can see his combine stats on the screen. Uh, I ran a 4 or 5 at the combine. 5'11", 190 with 28-inch arms. Let's get into his film. So everybody that you see on this on these tapes will have um, good feet, you know, decent technique. These, you know, DB and receiver are the premium slots right now other than maybe an interior D lineman that can do it all. So, um, you know, his speed is okay, 4 or 5, you know, but his technique is great. Playing the SEC, did a good job of using, you know, sidelines, when, when needed, uh, plays with leverage. And really, the, I think the thing that put him on his list for me is the fact that he don't mind coming up and laying wood. He, he's, a, he's a great tackler from the corner position. Did a good job versus um, in this game versus Ole Miss. Also did a good job versus uh, Jahan Dotson in the uh, Penn State game. So number 10 on my list is um, Roger McCreary. All right. All right, next on the list at number 9 is Kair Elam. And I know the Elam name scares a lot of Ravens fans, but let's not judge this Elam based off the sins of the old Elam. Uh, this guy is 6'1 and a half, 191 with 30, almost 31 inch arms. Ran a 4.39 in the combine, which is blazing. So uh, he has the recovery speed. Like I said, he has recovery speed to make up. Uh, does a good job with, with pass deflection. Didn't have a lot of interceptions, but that's not because he don't have ball skills. It's because guys just didn't try him. He stick and stay with with his guys a lot. Um, if in wide alignment like that, you know, you see on the screen right there, don't mind getting off of blocks. Um, we'll come up and tackle if he have to. I, mean, I don't think he's a tackler like McCrary, but he will come up and tackle if he has to. The um, the thing about him is he does a good job of funneling guys where he wants them to go. He's he's a press guy, so he can can get up in in people and kind of make them go where he wants them to go. He don't necessarily stop them from getting off the ball, but he knows where his help is and, and uses that that um, knowledge to funnel guys where you want them to go. And again, if he gets in a trail situation or he gets one of them old shit moments, he has the speed to catch up and, and get, get deflections or get pass breakups. Number nine, Kair Eagle. See, good leverage on that play right there. Knowing he had a safety over top. That's exactly what I was talking about. Kyler Gordon is next on our list from uh, UW, Washington, up there in Washington in, you know, the Seattle area. Um, 5'11 and a half, 191, 31-inch arms, 4'5'2 at the combine, which is not a, a blazing, blazing number. And, th and that's not a, a blazing, blazing number, but his technique is so sound. He's a, he's a zone corner. Just, just look at his hips on this play right here. He... he he knows where his help is. Look at the hips. Now flip him back around. That's fluid. That's fluid. And he, he, won't, he won't be a guy that can just constantly press you and, and do things in man to man. But you get a zone scheme, a, a cover three team, he's going to be perfect for that, for that fit. And, um, you know, and a lot of these rankings, boom or bust, it depends on where they go. And if the, if the team fits their skill set. And I think, you know, if he goes to a team that plays a lot of zone, with a good front four, a good front seven, hey, he'll be he'll fit right in and, and be a good player for him. And because you didn't have a, a film study on him, that's why I'm kind of giving you another play with, with his own technique. Watch his technique. Hips fluent. Look at that. It's going to be a great, great uh, zone coverage corner in the NFL. All right, we're up to number six on the list. And it's my personal favorite cornerback in this class. Not saying he's the best. Just my personal favorite, Tyreek Woolen, uh, Woolen from UTSA from Fort Worth, Texas, a whopping 6'4". The only other corner I've known to be that tall was um, Chris Westry. And it may have been other guys. If there is, put them in the comment section. But a uh, whopping 6'4". I think he's a converted wide receiver. 
and ran a four two six at the combine. Not a not the the hand stuff that you you know your coach may help you out. Four two six at the combine laser. So if this dude can figure it out, he eliminates so much. Matter of fact, just put the tape on while I talk. Yeah, and this dude is so long that he takes away you know any of that 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 notion that you have a a tall receiver and just throw it to him. Look how look at that. Great coverage on on a fade route, you know, and, and if that's, that's a smaller corner, you got a tall tall receiver, you just throw the jump ball up. He erases that, especially in the red zone. He erases that. Does a good job playing zone, but I really think he takes away the threat of people having they can just throw it up to their tall receiver, and then it, from the twenty to the twenty, he can he can play regular football. He can you know he can go at your quick outside receivers, your strong fast guys, and don't mind coming up making tackles. If he gets it right and gets with the good coach, six four running the four two, you that's a unicorn. That's a unicorn. But he's number six on my list and my favorite corner in this draft. But I ain't gonna say he's the best, but he's my favorite because of his measurables and what potentially he could do. Tyreek Woolen, UTSA. All right, next on my list at number six, and I may have misspoken on on the last one with the countdown, is uh, Daxton Hill. Again, Daxon Hill is number six. Woolen is number seven. I think I may have misspoken when I said that a minute ago. Daxton is probably the most versatile DB on this list. He can uh, he can be your your free. He can be your strong. He can also be your um, nickel guy if need be. And I don't know if you know it or not, but in the famous clip where George Pickens pushes the guy down, that's Daxton Hill playing outside corner. Even though he got the, the bad end of that exchange, that's Daxton Hill playing the outside corner. So he's probably the most versatile defensive back, you know, in this list. Um, from Tulsa, Oklahoma, I don't know if you don't know, he's um, Justice's Hills, the running back for the Ravens' brother. Um, ran a 4-3-8 at playing safety. So that's, that could be your center fielder if you need a center fielder. Uh, with that speed, playing in the box is dangerous. But let's uh, throw on the tape and talk about what I like about him a little bit. His versatility is crazy. Just in this game, he, right here he's lined up as a, the slot corner. Watch him avoid that. Now watch the speed to catch up. That is crazy from a guy that's really a safety. He In this game, he's all over the field. He he was in the box as like your sub linebacker. He was covering the slot defender on, that, on this play right here. Uh, you see him covering outside defenders when they outside receivers when they go in heavy set. This this dude can do it like right now. He's in the box. He's basically a linebacker. Basically a linebacker. In there on the top. This dude is the most versatile DB in this class and for that reason is that's why I have him ranked where he is. Probably could be higher, but the guys in the front of him are pretty pretty darn good, so to speak. Alright, next on the list at number five is Trent McDuffie. Uh, ran a 4-4-4 at the combine, standing 5'11", 193 pounds, almost 30-inch uh, arm, long, 30-inch long arms uh, from Washington. The Huskies, again, another one. Now, I don't know who's coaching DBs at Washington, but whoever he is deserves, or she, deserves a raise. Uh, they got two guys in the top in my top 10, and then I think in everybody else's top 10 or whatever, they have both of these guys anyway. But this one, he he's faster. McDuffie's faster than uh, Gordon, I think. Yeah, Gordon. So he's his ability to play corner, no, no, not to play corner, his ability to play man is better than, than Gordon's. Gordon's a, a great technician with, you know, in zone stuff. But the thing is, McDuffie's just as good in zone, but can play man better. Uh, again, get, get in that situation where it's one of them old snaps I got to catch up. He can do that with no problem. Uh, inside leverage, look at the technique. Get them press bell technique. And, you know, it looks like man until it ain't man. And so you probably change your, your, your script on it then. But um, the the technical side of these two guys from, from Washington are impeccable. Um, Especially with the with in regards to zone playing zone, the the man side there, McGordon's okay, not bad. He's okay, but the thing the thing that impresses me is McDuffie can 
can be like, okay, you done caught too many balls. Y'all take care of them 10. I got this guy. That's that's the difference right there. And so um, for that reason, that's why McDuffie's number five on my list. Let's go to number four. Number four on the list, Andrew Booth, uh, cornerback from Clemson. Uh, no 40 time from the combine, uh, but he's from Dracula, Georgia. Uh, six foot, 194. Uh, arms are almost 32 inches or 31 and a half inch long. So um, that's a, that's a pretty size length for you know guys standing six feet. He can he can go up and high point balls, and we've all seen the play where like he it's in slow motion where he's not in the screen. And all of a sudden, he the receiver's about to catch, and he just comes out of nowhere and dives, you know, and half points the ball. We've all seen that catch. Let's just 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 watch his his stick and stay ability, you know, right here on this play right here. And he does this all take long. The receiver's gonna try all kinds of stuff to get away from. Him. Outside don't work. Inside don't work. Scramble drill don't work. You know, the only way he got away from him, the ball was thrown. <laughs> so his his man his ability to play man is only topped by two other dudes, only topped by two other dudes. Let's watch him on this play right here and impress Bell. You know they run it, but still his his ability to say like just like just like um McDuffie. All right, you didn't have caught enough balls. Uh, we finna do our thing over here, but don't get that twisted because he's in zone. Look at him at the field right there. And he didn't come up and, and finish that. You know, the tight end kind of got in it. But the fact that he come up with reckless abandon the field on that. See it? Feel it? And he said the edge. And I don't know if, you, you know, a lot of you know about saying the edge, but he said the edge. Everybody go down. Like a lot of them stunts inside. He's the edge defender. Setting the edge right there. A lot of corners ain't coming down making business decisions like that. The fact that he don't mind getting in the run game. Uh, can play you in man to man, understands how to play zone too, and, and has great hips and great feet, and high points the ball. That that puts him at number four on this list. Puts him at number four on this list. And I don't think there's but two other corners better than him, and we finna get to those guys right now. All right, number three on our list, and and to me is the number one safety, um, Kyle Hamilton from um, Atlanta, played at Notre Dame, six four two twenty. Uh, 33 inch arms. I uh, ran a 4.59 at the combine, which for what he does, that run is slow compared to how much ground he covers. And everybody seemed to play. Let's get into it while I talk about it. Okay, really, when talking about Kyle Hamilton, these two plays back to back kind of stand out to me. You see him make the tackle right down the quarterback, and we'll see it from the back end. Just these two plays kind of amplify why I think he is as good as he is. You can't see him in the screen now, but he's on the right side. You'll have a quarterback, Jordan Travis, who's pretty darn shifty. One-on-one -on -one tackle, go down, make the tackle, form tackle. Now you get him, you know, he's going to be playing the slot. You know, he's, he's versatile also at 6'4". Look at him coming down there to play the number three receiver. Playing zero, which is a more shifty guy. If I'm not mistaken, it's probably one of the running backs, I think. I think that's Corbin. But you see him right there and just the ability for him to stick and stay with a guy. Playing safe. They're playing cover one. All over his guy. All over his guy. Can run with him. Now the length come in. Boom. Now, that's that's one of the picks. The other pick I'm not going to show you, but I'm just going to give you a point of reference. Let me back it up a little bit. All right, point of reference. That other pick, Kyle Hamilton started off kind of up here on this top hash where you see the arrow at. The ball was thrown on this bottom hash. He, you know, throughout the play, he kind of moved to the middle. But as the quarterback is kind of in the same position and he decides to wind up and throw, he closes that space all the way down here and then gets a toe tap on the sideline. So just to sum up Kyle, Ham Kyle Hamilton and what I really love about him, range. He has the range to, to be your center fielder. He can come down in the box and do what needs to be. Got ball skills. And he's 6'4". <laughs> what more do you ask for? I mean, it's out of a guy. Number two. On the list, Ahmad Sauce Gardner uh, ran a 4-4-1 of the combine uh, from Detroit, Michigan. Played at University of Cincinnati, where they had a ton of uh, good defensive players. You're looking at Maje Sanders, um, uh, Kobe Bryant. Uh, they has uh, you know some other good guys on that team too defensively. Six uh, three, one ninety. Six three, one ninety. Ran a 4-4-1, uh, and I'll talk about why I doubted him 
why I doubted him early right now. So when I first started hearing about Ahmad Sauce Gardner, I was like, you know, well, who's who's he covered? He played in the AAC. There's no no big time receivers there. How can he be the best corner, you know, in his in his class? He he's not guarding anybody. And so, um, and I even thought that after this Alabama game. But when I got when I was able to look at the all twenty two and kind of break down just him versus Jamison and versus the other cats, um, them cats wasn't open. <laughs> and you know, whether they were targeted or not. They weren't open. He was where he needed to be, using his um, his technique, using his speed to to play defense on them guys. And so I came out of the tape, you know, fairly impressed with 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 Gardner's ability. And then when I went to go do the thumbnail, and I don't know why I didn't see it before, I went to go do the thumbnail, so I went to go look up his measurables, and it said six three. That really boosted, you know, his tape versus these guys in my eyes. I didn't. I just didn't know he was 6'3 when I was when I was evaluating. So all my evaluation and stuff I said in the video is based off him, you know, being an average, you know, just thinking he's an average size corner. But when I typed in 6'3 and, and realized how tall he was, that puts him up there with, with Woolen. As, you know, a, 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 in the red zone, one-on-one -on -one up there at the top. You ain't got to worry about that. Now, if he catch it, if Michi catch I mean, if uh, with Jameson catching on, hey, that's fine, whatever. But now you don't have to add an extra guy to be, you know, to worry about a jump ball. And now you can focus on your run stuff and just let that tall corner go handle it. And so his ability to play zone, his ability to lock guys up, because, again, you know, that stats out there that he didn't give up a touchdown all year maybe or in two years or however many snaps or whatever the stat is, the kid can play. The kid can play. And had it not been for our number one guy, He'd be the best DB in this in this draft to me. But let's get into our number one guy. We all know who that is by now. And number one on our list, Derek Stanley Jr. Um, was a part of the national championship team on LSU. Well, at LSU in 2019 with Joe Burrow and all them cats. Uh, six foot, 190 pounds, 30, almost 31 inch arms. Didn't run at the uh, combine, but still getting over the Liz Frank, I think. But ran as a pro day around a 4-3 something. I'm not sure what the number was. I know it was a 4-3 something. Blazing. Um, I mean, I really don't think it matters what I say about Stingley. I can tell you, you know, how fast he is, how good a technique he is, how how instinctive he is, how, how good his ball skills is. But this is just one thing that you know really stands out, and the fact that people are downplaying him because he had a lackluster 2020 and 2021. Uh, I don't think he only played four games in 2021. 2020 was you know hit or miss or whatnot. But he in 2019, which is this team we're looking at now, it was a team full of dogs, like a team full of dogs, and he was the the young pup in that team full of dogs. But he had his own. Look at that coverage right there, using the sideline. That's he all over that cat, but you can say all anything you want to say about Stingley, you know, attitude or didn't perform. But when you look at that tape versus Jamar Chase, and then you see what Jamar Chase did to the NFL this year, look, he had free safety right there. How can this cat not be your number one guy? Now I can I can understand if he was already in the NFL and he didn't play for like two years, you could say well his his skills or whatever have left him because he's older. But that this he was 18 when in this film right here, so now he's 20, 21. He probably getting better. He's probably getting better. J. Mar took a year off and focused on the NFL. Look at how much better he was. Now Stingley didn't take a year off, but he's probably been focused on this. The NFL level of competition since these cats were on the field together. So, ain't much to tell you, man. He got it all. He can do it all. He can run. He can play zone. He can press. He can tackle. Look at that, that technique. That's impeccable. That's an 18 year old. That's what you're watching right here. This is from 2019. You can just sit down. Look at that, baby. Look at that. You're not open. Let's just recap, man, because Derek Stingley is, is the guy for this draft. Derek Stingley is the guy. Now, you can find any kind of ways you want to hate about it, 
but he he's the dude. All right, so here's the full list of the top ten, and I think I misspoke while I was doing the breakdowns of it, so don't don't kill me on that in the comment section. Number ten, Roger McCrary from Auburn. Um, oh, I misspelled Hamilton too. Let me see if I can fix that before this come out. Um, Kyrie Elam from Florida, number nine. Kyler Gore from Washington, number eight. Tyreek Woolen from UTSA, number seven. Dax Hill from Michigan, the most versatile guy, you know, in this in this um, draft class. Dax Hill from Michigan. Uh, Tyreek Woolen is my favorite corner in this draft. Uh, Derek, uh, Derek, Trent McDuff is number five for Washington. Andrew Booth, number four for Clemson. Kyle Hamilton, I'm going to go back and put that back up there. But when you see this, it's going to be misspelled. I know it's H-A. Uh, I ain't crazy. Number three, Sauce Gardner, Amar Sauce Gardner, number two. And number one, Derek Stingley Jr. from LSU, man. Uh, I appreciate you guys for rocking with me. I, this is probably a lengthy one, but I really like this version of the way I do it. But when I got to have time to do this. And so, I um, hey, enjoy your Saturday night, man. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. I appreciate you guys. And, uh, oh, upcoming schedule. Monday, we're going to do a, I'm looking at my calendar. Offensive philosophy, offensive draft philosophy at 9 p.m. Monday. And we're going to talk about the offensive needs and how I think they should draft. Then Tuesday, we'll do defensive draft, for draft philosophy at 9 p.m. and do the same thing. And then Wednesday, at 9, I'll give my top 32, which is basically my big board. I got uh, my big board. I stopped at 32 because that's how many picks there are in the first round. And so I'll, you know, talk to you guys about that and share that with you. So, again, I appreciate you guys. I appreciate the Patreons. I appreciate the Super Chats. I appreciate the Cash Apps. And I appreciate the... I always forget this last one. What's this last one? Um, PayPal. PayPal. Amen. Peace. With the